Oh right, and welcome back to another Toddy Walnuts collection overview video. I want to thank you guys for voting on the poll that I put up earlier today. The question was, do you prefer a one long video or a series of shorter videos? And the, the long video won pretty handedly. I think there was 30 votes and there was I think 25 of them were for the longer video so thank you for contributing it lets me know what you guys like to see and that's what I want to do so let's get into my arrow video collection um, this is everything that I own there's a lot of titles missing and this is where you guys come in because you can take a look and see what I have and you can comment below and let me know what I need to pick up and hopefully also this will maybe give you some ideas of some movies that you can get for your collection. So just briefly here, um, before I get into it, I'm going to give you a rundown of how I have this organized. And the first three shelves you see there are the Amore cases and the slipcover editions. And then getting down into the lower shelves, I have some of the collector's editions and box sets. And then getting down to that bottom shelf, uh, the box sets continue and then it runs into the DVDs. And then going over to a second shelf, the DVDs continue. And then we get into the steel books that I have. And finally, we'll get into the window box editions. So get yourself a beverage and a snack. This is gonna be a long one. Uh, it's probably going to be around an hour or so. I don't want to go through too fast and I don't want to drag it on too long. So I'm going to try to find that sweet spot in the middle. So let's take a look and see what I have in my collection. Okay, so as I mentioned, we're going to get into the Amore cases and the slipcover editions. Uh, these are alphabetized, but I'm not perfect, and there may be one or two that are out of order, so you have to bear with me on that. For the most part, these are pretty good, though, I think. And we're going to go through the top shelf, starting with the A's. We have Alice, Sweet Alice that nice slip cover second one is called Baron Blood a Mario Bava picture next one is Basket Case another beautiful slip cover kind of has a metallic foil I put little plastic boxes over the slipcover editions so they may seem to pick up a little more reflection but I want to make sure that I do protect the slipcovers. Next one is called the Beast Within. Pretty good creature feature film it has some pretty good uh, transformation scenes. This one is Beyond Reanimator. This one's kind of a rare slip cover. It glows in the dark. Give you a better viewing of that. It's pretty sweet. Pretty good movie too. I enjoy the Reanimator movies. Next one is called Beyond the Valley of the Dolls. I picked that one up at a Barnes and Noble a couple of years ago. Next one is a black and white picture called The Big Knife. It has Shelley Winters in it, Jack Palance, Rod Steiger. This is a movie from, uh, I believe it was from the 60s. Actually, no, 1955. Kind of a film noir, if I remember. Next one is uh, some black exploitation goodness called Black Mama. White Mama, Pam Greer. She's always fun. 
Another Mario Bava film called Black Sabbath. Japanese cinema called Black Society Trilogy. Takashi Miike directed the trilogy and you get the Shinjuku Tri Triad Society, Rainy Dog and Ley Lines. That is the Region A edition. More Japanese cinema it's called Blind Woman's Curse. Herschel Gordon Lewis, Blood Feast. Here's Blood Rage. I forgot to mention also, speaking of Herschel Gordon Lewis, there are a couple of editions that don't fit on the shelves here, so I will show those at the very end. Those are some of the bigger box sets that I have. Those will be at the very, very end. I have the Bloodstained Butterfly, which is a Italian giallo film. It's a DVD Blu-ray combo. Brain Damaged, Frank Henenlotter, horror comedy. Pretty nice slipcover. Film from the 70s, I believe, 1974. Bring Me the Head of Alfredo Garcia. Yep, 1974. This is the limited edition. Comes with a bonus Blu-ray. Jules Dassin picture with Burt Lancaster called Brute Force. Lancaster was always a very good actor, very, very good tough guy. It's one of my favorite slashers of all time. This is The Burning. Cropsy. Another very good one called Burnt Offerings. This one is still sealed because I do have this on Blu-ray. I believe it was also put up by Kino Lorber and I think that's the one that I, I watch. I think it was Kino Lorber. Here is The Car. I think that's Edward James Olmos. Mm, no, it's not. James Brolin is in here, though. It's a movie from 1977. Car Possession movie. Here's another Giallo film. Sergio Martino's The Case of the Scorpion's Tail. a French Western called Cemetery Without Crosses. Here is Children of the Corn with the slipcover. Looks really good. The Chill Factor. Another fun kind of a wintry slasher movie. Here is Chud. I remember watching this on VHS back in the day with my dad and we got a kick out of that. Chud stands for Cannibalistic Humanoid Underground Dwellers. A little monster creature feature movie. The City of the Dead. Another black and white horror film. Here is some trauma goodness called Class of Newcomb High. Pretty ridiculous movie, but it's fun. Here is The Climber. If you guys want to comment on any of these that you see, please feel free to do so below. It always helps my channel for the thumbs up and the comments I get. So if you want to, sub you know, if you want to subscribe and to, um, show support to the channel you can do those those things give a thumbs up and comment and even just viewing is is good enough for me so thank you for doing that 
Here's a Jack Hill film called Coffee, starring the very lovely and sexy Pam Greer. Here's one that I still haven't watched yet. This is called The Cold Light of Day. This is based on a serial killer, I believe. A British serial killer, Dennis Nelson. This one was limited to 2000. So I was glad to pick that one up. Next one is called Contamination. Really spectacular slipcover. Very shiny. Cinema Paradiso. Kathleen Turner in Crimes of Passion. Also Anthony Perkins is in here and that's another beautiful slipcover. Oh, that neon really really appealing to the eye here's another Japanese horror film called Dark Water David Cronenberg's early years you get looks like five films from his earliest days these are very short films you get Transfer from the Drain Stereo and Crimes of the Future Here is a spaghetti western starring Lee Van Cleef and Giuliano Gemma called Day of Anger, which is a very good spaghetti western. I recommend that one. Here is Dead or Alive and Dead or Alive 2 Birds and Dead or Alive Final Takashi Miike movies. Next one's called Dead End Drive-In, very low budget. Kind of a strange movie, but it was still fun. I enjoyed it. Another one I like, this is Wes Craven's Deadly Blessing. I believe Michael Berryman is in here. And Sharon Stone, Ernest Borgnine. I recommend this one too. That also had a Scream Factory release. This was a pretty decent slasher. It was okay. It was more middle of the road, a little bit better than middle of the road. And this was one I had not seen before until Arrow put it out. And uh, I was glad I watched it called Deadly Manor. another giallo film called death smiles on a murderer joe d'amato film they always have really good titles the italians do that's a beautiful title death smiles on a murderer chuck norris action lee marvin the delta force 80s action movie here's a movie that is based on the true life crimes of Ed Gein, the butcher of Plainfield here in my home state of Wisconsin. And this is probably one of the better Ed Gein movies that are made about his life. It's pretty, pretty close to being accurate. And I liked how they kind of made it like a, um, a documentary. There was a guy narrating and I do recommend this one. There have been a lot of movies made about Ed Gein. This is probably one of the better ones. Here's another true crime movie about a gangster from the, I guess, 30s and 40s. John Dillinger. Movie was made in the 70s, I believe. 1973. Another spaghetti western. This one's called Django Prepare a Coffin. From the 60s that was kind of the heyday of the spaghetti western the mid to late 60s was probably the uh, the high point for this genre and this one stars Terrence Hill as Django here's one I still have yet to see this one's called Doberman cop I believe this is a Japanese action movie based on the manga called uh, based on a popular manga by Bronson 
Doberman Cop follows the fish out of water adventures of Joji Kano, a tough as nails police officer. So it is a kind of a cop action movie. This one's called Doom Mansion. There's a film by Fulci called Don't Torture a Duckling, I'm trying to get a better angle here so it doesn't pick up that reflection. Because I do have the flash on just to kind of capture the details. It's about uh, kind of dusk here in Wisconsin as I'm recording this. It's about 5 p.m. so it's starting to get dark already. Uh, here's a Brian De Palma film called Dressed to Kill. And that will do it for shelf one and we still got a long way to go guys so stick around and we'll do shelf two okay so the first one on shelf two these are packed in quite quite tightly because I do have very limited space so what I'm gonna do I'll pull one out show you the first one and then I'll keep that one out and this is Abel Ferreira's The Driller Killer. And this is a pretty good kind of a uh, splatter flick from the late 70s, 1979. I, I enjoy the movie. It's pretty fun. That's a pretty cool cover, too. So let me put that one back, and we will continue. There we go. All right, so... Of Toby Hooper's Eaten Alive. This is a fun movie. You have a very young uh, Robert England in here. He plays a character named Buck. You guys all know the line by now. Next one's called Edge of the Axe. This is another kind of a rare slipcover. I thought it was a pretty good watch. I like the 80s kind of backwoods slasher type movies. Here's Evil Ed. This was an upgrade for me. I do have the DVD with the uh, snapper case. You guys know that one. I'm sure a lot of you own that one as well or owned it at some point. This is, I forget the uh, English title. This is a good Franco Nero movie. This was called The Fifth Cord. I watched this one not too long ago and it was actually pretty good. Franco Nero was very good in this movie. It's another Giallo serial killer type movie. Next one is called, this was one I haven't seen yet, The Forbidden Photos of a Lady Above Suspicion, Luciano Ercoli. Mario Baba's Five Dolls for an August Moon. Another Jack Hill and Pam Greer collaboration called Foxy Brown. Probably the, I would say probably my favorite Pam Greer movie, Foxy Brown. Coffee was really good too. They're all very good. Another Brian De Palma film called The Fury. Another spaghetti western starring Lee Van Cleef called The Grand Duel, another very good spaghetti western. Here's a beautiful slipcover called The Giver, Blu-ray DVD combo, kind of a sci-fi horror, I guess, more sci-fi though, and uh, that slipcover is really nice. Here's a German picture by Fritz Lang called Hangmen Also Die. Takashi Miike, The Happiness of the Katakuris. Really weird movie. Here's kind of a sci-fi comedy cult picture called Hell Comes to Frogtown. Very fun watch starring the late Rowdy Rowdy Piper. I recommend watching that one. It's a good watch. Here is Hellgate. 
I believe these were very limited. Limited to 1,000 copies. Which they have, these have been long sold out. This one was also limited to 1,000 copies. These were released in the year 2013. And I think they sold out very, very quickly. So, um, as far as Hell Comes to Frog Town, you can get a really nice edition of that from Vinegar Syndrome. They put out a nice little box set for that one. Here's an American Western starring Peter Fonda called The Hired Hand. This was pretty good. Warren Oates is also in it too. I enjoyed it. Christopher Lee movie, Horror Express from 1984. So this is kind of later in the horror game for Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing is also in it and so is Telly Savalas. You can see the three gentlemen up there. Depicted in the artist's rendering of the commissioned artwork and that is beautiful. Horror Express. Here is Horrors of Malformed Men. This was a weird movie too. I watched it a few years back. I don't really remember a lot about it. A movie from 1969. It's kind of, from what I remember, it's kind of like the island of Dr. Moreau, only with a Japanese horror twist, so you know it's going to be very, very bizarre. In a good way, though. It, it was enjoyable. Here's The Howling 2. Sybil Danning, I believe, is in this one. Christopher Lee. Yeah, Sybil Danning was in this one. I liked part two better than part one. I know that's blasphemous because a lot of people really like Howling 1. For me, Howling 1 was uh, overrated, to say the least, in my opinion. This is a more modern horror movie called Incident in a Ghost Land. I really enjoyed this one. This was very, very creepy. And I recommend checking this one out. It came out in 2017, the movie did. If you haven't seen that one, definitely check it out. The Incredible Melting Man, kind of another splatter flick. Very low budget, ridiculous movie, but still a lot of fun. Definitely a drive-in style movie. And that cover is amazing. This is the remake of Invasion of the Body Snatchers, 1976, I believe. Yes, uh, no, 1978. I was close. Very fun movie. The Initiation. Kind of a sorority house, uh, satanic worship type movie. The Iguana and the Tongue of Fire. See how the Italians are very clever with their titles and they pull you in. How would you not want to watch The Iguana and the Tongue of Fire? This is a very, very old Hitchcock movie. I believe this may be his very first movie. I could be wrong about that. But it's one of his earliest movies starring Charles Lawton and Maureen O'Hara Hara from... Um, It was Marina O'Hare's first major role. Uh, she was in Gone with the Wind, I believe. But uh, this is a 4K digital restoration of a 1939 picture from Hitchcock. All Hitchcock fans probably own this one. Or if you're just a, a horror movie collector or an aero video collector, this should be in your collection either way. Here's JD's Revenge. Black Exploitation Horror. Franco Nero as Kioma. Another spaghetti western. Mario Baba, Kill Baby Kill. Fun movie. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Another very silly, over-the-top, uh, but a very fun, drive-in style movie. 
Here's the Killers, a Don Siegel picture. Here's an excellent movie. This is one of my favorite movies. The Killing, Stanley Kubrick. Very, very good movie. About a bank robbery and some betrayal as well. Uh, let's see, George A. Romero's Night Riders. Pretty good movie. Different for Romero, but it was still fun. La Grande Bouffe. Or is it La Grande Buffet? I, I'm not sure. And you know what? Still, after all these years, I have not watched the movie. Even though I know it's, from what I hear, it's a, it's a good movie. The English translation of La Grande Buffet is The Big Feast. Here is the Lake Michigan Monster. I live in Wisconsin. I'm only literally a stone's throw away from Lake Michigan. A lot of you guys who follow my channel know that I, I make videos down by the lake sometimes. It's one of my favorite things about the state of Wisconsin. I'm very proud of Lake Michigan. La Sassino, the assassin. Toby Hooper's Life Force, another movie I really like. It's a horror movie that takes place in space. Very good special effects and uh, the set pieces and the lighting and everything kind of comes together for that movie. And that cover looks beautiful, by the way. Here is Mad House. Another one of my favorites from my childhood, Madman. Backwoods Slasher, um, Madman Mars, don't say his name. Here is Massacre Gun, I think this was also limited to, this was limited to 3,000 copies. Microwave Massacre, absolutely a ridiculous movie, but it was fun. Definitely the kind of movie you'd see on, uh, a drive-in screen back in the day. Milano Calibro 9, Fernando Di Leo, Italian crime movie. Here's a pretty good horror comedy called Motel Hell. Pretty creepy movie, but uh, it's, it's dark comedy. Here's The Mutilator, another very good movie by Buddy Cooper. With that slipcover, beautiful. I enjoy the movie. John Ford's My Darling Clementine. It's from Arrow Academy. Here's Italian zombie goodness, Nightmare City, starring Hugo Stiglitz. This is a fun movie. It's ridiculous, but it's fun. The Naked City. The Navigator, a medieval odyssey. Filmed by Vincent Ward. Um, this one is about a group of medieval people who teleport to modern day, I believe it's New York. Yeah, the people are from 1348, the year of the Black Death, and they surface in 1980s New Zealand, not New York. In the background, it looks like it would be kind of like a New York type skyline. I saw that movie once a while ago, and I don't really remember much about it. Here's Night of the Comet, kind of a post-apocalyptic type movie. This is a fun movie too couple of valley girls who are trying to make it through the zombie apocalypse after a comet crashes into the earth. One of my favorite movies of all time, The Night of the Hunter, starring Robert Mitchum, who was a, a excellent villain in this movie. Very, very good watch. I recommend that one very much. Another one that's excellent, this is The Oxbow Incident. And Clint Eastwood, the actor, director extraordinaire, 
um, picks this movie as one of his favorites of all time. I wouldn't say it's one of my favorites of all time, but it's a very, very good movie. This one has, um, let me see here. Henry Fonda is in here. Uh, Henry Morgan, who played in MASH for many years. Excellent movie. Definitely do check out Oxbow Incident. It has kind of a kind of a twist ending, and it's something you it really makes you think. The ending of that movie, do, did they do the right thing? What would you do? Type deal. Here's Wes Craven's The People Under the Stairs. Another fun movie, really wacky movie, but I enjoyed it. That's one I saw in the movie theater years ago. And the last one for Shelf 2 is Phantom of the Paradise, another Brian De Palma movie. So that concludes Shelf 2. I believe we're about a half hour in already and we're only at Shelf 2. So we have a long ways to go. Let us continue. So I should probably pick up the pace a little bit here. I'll go a little bit quicker. Here's a twin billing. A pistol for Ringo and the return of Ringo. I believe this is another Jack Hill film. Uh, yes, it is. And this is called Pit Stop. I don't know why it's open. There we go. Pit Stop. Next one is Shokasugi in Pray for Death. Japanese goodness. And we have The Prey. Limited edition, limited to 3,000 copies. Here's a British movie, very weird movie called Psychomania. Here's one called The Pajama Girl Case. David Cronenberg's Rabid, I really like that movie. The Saska sisters have remade this movie, but I like the original better. We have another Shokasugi movie called Rage of Honor. Another Brian De Palma movie called Raising Cain with John Lithgow as the bad guy. Rawhead Rex, a Scottish monster movie, creature feature. Fun watch. Ray Harryhausen, spe special effects titan. Kind of a documentary about the life of Harryhausen. Remo Williams, The Adventure Begins. Kill and Prey, Spaghetti Western. Retaliation, more Japanese goodness. Return of the Killer Tomatoes, horror comedy, low budget. Rififi, Jules Dassin. The Runaway Train, I enjoyed this movie quite a bit. Eric Roberts. And uh, for some reason my mind went blank. Uh, John Voight, of course. Satan's Blade. Scared Stiff. Schlock, John Landis picture. The Serpent's Egg. Sisters. The Slayer. That was a pretty fun movie. Is it great? No, but it, uh, it's it was definitely fun. As was this one, Slugs. Another Jack Hill movie, Spider Baby. I believe this was the first uh, movie for Sid Haig. Uh, it was it was one of his earliest, if not his earliest. Here's Squirm, about a well about killer nightcrawlers who get uh, kind of charged by a lightning strike, and when the lightning strikes the ground, it turns these night crawlers into bloodthirsty killers here's a larry cohen film kind of ridiculous comedy uh, the stuff
strip nude for your killer. Giallo. The Suspicious Death of a Minor from Sergio Martino. I watched this one uh, about a year ago. I thought it was pretty good, actually. Here is Tenderness of the Wolves, based on a serial killer. Fritz Harman, the Vampire of Hanover, who was a German serial killer. Here's Argento's Tenebrae. You'll see this movie a couple more times in the collection, different editions. Here's one I really enjoyed called Terror in a Texas Town. I watched this one about uh, probably a year ago, a year and a half ago, and I thought it was really good, actually. Here's Thief. This was a really good movie, a Michael Mann movie. It has uh, Dennis Farina is in here. It was very, very good. I should watch that one again. It's it's definitely worthy of multiple watches. Here's another Jules Dassin movie called Thieves Highway. Lee J. Cobb is in here. Lee J. Cobb was one of Sinatra's favorite actors. There's a story about Sinatra and Lee J. Cobb. Um, if you go, if you want to Google that. Um, I think you'd be interested in reading about that. I don't want to spend too much time talking about it, but Sinatra did something really good for Lee J. Cobb when he was on his deathbed. Trapped Alive. The Untamed. The Visitor. We are the flesh. What have they done to your daughters? Another Giallo. What have you done to Solange? Who dares wins? That's another British movie. The Wild Geese, another British uh, action military movie. With Nail and I. Wolf Guy. And so that would be the end of the Amory cases. So now we're going to get into the box sets. We have two on this shelf. First one is American Horror Project, Volume 1, which comes with Malatesta's Carnival of Blood, The Witch Who Came from the Sea, and The Premonition. Can see them all here. That's volume one. And volume two. Slide that out there. These are really cool, by the way. And I'm going to keep buying these. I'm not sure if there's a volume three. I haven't checked in a while. If any of you guys know, you can leave me a comment. But this one comes with Dark August, Dream, No Evil, and The Child. So that will conclude shelf three. We went through that one quite a bit quicker. Seven and a half minutes just for that shelf. So I cut it in half. So we will continue to shelf four and more box sets. So continuing with the box sets. This was one of the earliest Blu-ray box sets I picked up from Arrow. And this one was kind of a funny size. Let me hold on a second. I got this in here kind of goofy. I'll pull that off. Make, make it a little easier for myself here. This is called Battle Royale. This is the limited edition Blu-ray box set. And if you look side by side with a normal box set, it's a little bit bigger, about an inch, an inch taller. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit of an ob obscure size. But you got all the it's a pretty good box set. I actually had two of these. That's why this one's still sealed. I ended up trading it, though, a couple years ago. But I have opened this up. I believe I've opened it up on the channel before, so I don't remember which video. But you get comic and postcards, booklets, special features, director's cut, theatrical cut. You get everything that you can ever imagine that you need for Battle Royale. Japanese survival horror type movie. American Werewolf in London, one of my favorite 
creature feature films from the 80s. I remember that one very fondly, watching that as a kid. Here is Battles Without Honor and Humanity, the complete collection. And in this collection, you get a, a nice hardcover book called the Yakuza Papers. You get Battles Without Honor and Humanity, the complete saga, final episode, police tactics, proxy war, Hiroshima, deathmatch, and Battles Without Honor and Humanity. Really cool box set. And we have a George A. Romero, Between Night and Dawn. So these were movies that he made in between Night of the Living Dead and Dawn of the Dead. He made The Crazies, Season of the Witch, and there's always vanilla, plus it comes with a book. It's a really nice box set. That's a great idea that Arrow had for that. Next one's called Beyond the Door. It's a Italian kind of, a, well, not kind of, it's, a, it's an exorcist ripoff. You get a nice book and uh, the movie in there. You get Black Cats. You get two movies, one by Sergio Martino, one by Fulci. The Martino film is called Your Vice is a Locked Room and Only I Have the Key. And the Fulci picture is called The Black Cat. Also comes with a book. And these are two movies that were inspired by Edgar Allan Poe, his writings. Here's Candyman. Fun watch. City of the Living Dead. I love these box sets like this. These are perfect. I like the way they look. I like, you know, I like everything about them. You get a nice book. You get the Amory case. You get a nice hard shell. If they only did these, I would love them. I also do love these uh, window boxes, but they don't do those anymore. But we'll get to those later. Here's Argento's The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. And then this is the 4K, The Bird with the Crystal Plumage. Next one is Blood Bath. Jose Larraz, Blood Hunger, the films of Jose Larraz, you get Whirlpool, The Coming of Sin, and Vampires. And then you get a nice book. That's another really nice set. Carrie. The Cat O Nine Tales. And then the 4K. The Cat O Nine Tales. And then here's kind of another oddball. I don't know if you can see it, but it sticks out quite a bit further, about maybe a half inch, three quarters of an inch further than the other editions. This is Guillermo del Toro's Crimson Peak. It's a nice set though. It's made to look like a book. Everything will fall out if I open it, but it looks really cool. It's just a little bit too big. I have a couple editions of Creepshow 2. I know there was a third one. I think, uh, well, there was this one. I think this is the U.S. edition. And then this was the Canadian edition. So you get two covers of the same exact movie, just different colors. You get the red for the U.S., purple for Canada. And I think there was like a powder blue or a baby blue, sky blue color one. And I think it was the Arrow website exclusive. So maybe at some point if I find that cheap, I'll pick it up just to have it in here for the collection, but I'm not going to go out of my way to look for it. Here's another really cool set called Death Walks Twice, two films by Luciano Ercoli. You get Death Walks at Midnight and Death Walks on High Heels, Giallo films, and you get a nice book in there too. And we have a couple editions of Deep Red. This was the first one. It was kind of in a flimsy, kind of a cheaper box. This, this box is very weak. And then they re-released it, I think a year or two after, and they gave it a hard shell and it's a much better quality box. This one right here was Region B. And this one was 
limited to I don't remember I think it may have been 3,000 or 2,000 but it came with a bonus CD soundtrack that I believe this one does not have so this is a two disc edition and uh, I think this is a three disc edition so that's why I'm not getting rid of this one this one is a little more rare but it's a little cheaper quality but it does come with the CD soundtrack so those were deep red um, and then this is also deep red but this is the 4k and that's the alternate Italian title profondo rosso which means deep red in Italian and then I have the 4k edition of demons which uh, I'm not a fan of this box at all I think it's it's horrible it's very weak and loose and I don't like to complain about movies much but that's when I, I'm not a big fan of that packaging at all so that is the end of shelf four we will continue to shelf five okay so now I'm on my knees getting down to shelf number five and we still have two more shelves on this unit before we go over to the next shelving unit first one here is called Der Todes King Bootgerite film this is the three disc directors approved limited edition and I still have not seen this movie yet it's a three disc because it comes with the CD soundtrack also has a 60 page perfect bound book next one is called Django this is the one that Arrow had a little bit of legal issues releasing this one because they didn't quite have the rights at the time. I'm sure you guys all know that story. Good movie though, very good movie. And it's a Sergio Corbucci movie and Franco Nero to me will always be the only Django. He's the best and the only in my opinion. Here's Donnie Darko box set. This one's still sealed, but I've seen this movie probably five, six times. It's a very good movie. I really enjoy it. Here is the complete Dr. Fibes, starring Vincent Price. You get uh, the abominable Dr. Fibes. Dr. Fibes rises again, and then you get a, a book, the complete Dr. Fibes. This is the newest one to my collection. This is Dune. This is the Fassbender collection, the Rainier Warner Fassbender collection in, in this set. You get the early works, the merchant of four seasons, and beware of a holy whore. There's a title for you. Beware of the holy whore. The marriage of Maria Braun, Fox and his friends and Chinese roulette, Effie Briest, Fear Eats the Soul, The Bitter Tears of Petra von Kant, and you get a book, the Rainier Warner Fassbender Collection. Here is the complete collection of Female Prisoner Scorpion, and in this collection you get a book on top which is called female prisoner scorpion the complete collection you get a poster you get female prisoner scorpion number 701's grunge uh, grudge song female prisoner scorpion beast stable female prisoner scorpion jailhouse 41 and female prisoner number 701 scorpion Japanese here's the 4k edition of flash Gordon a movie that has um, that I love in my childhood heart I remember watching this it has a, an excellent soundtrack by the band Queen this is a two disc two blu-ray set and uh, I haven't popped it in to watch it yet but I've seen this movie many many times like I said it's a childhood favorite of mine Here's a box set called He Came From the Swamp. This is the William Griffay collection. And in this collection, 
you get uh, William Griffey was a director from Florida, the state of Florida. You get Whiskey Mountain, and they came from the swamp. Sting of Death, Death Curse of Tartu, The Hooked Generation, The Psychedelic Priest, The Naked Zoo, Mako, Jaws of Death, and you get a book called He Came from the Swamp, the William Griffey Collection. Here is Hellraiser 1, 2, and 3 box set. And the Hellraiser, the Scarlet box, 1, 2, and 3. And this one is signed by Doug Bradley. This is probably, well, not probably. This is one of the crown jewels of my collection. I'm not going to open it just because it'll probably take a lot of time to go through and show you, but I'm sure you, you've seen unboxings of this here on YouTube. The next one is The Hills Have Eyes, the original from Wes Craven. And The Hills Have Eyes Part 2, which is not near as good as Part 1. It's still fun. I have The House Collection. This has the book on top called The House Companion. Uh, and then in reverse order, we have House 4, The Repossession. House 3, The Horror Show. House 2, The Second Story. And House, the original. I had to pause it there for a moment to sneeze. I think I'm kicking up some dust in here. Even though I did dust before the video, you can't get it all. I mean, there's a little nooks and crannies that the dust hides in and just got to deal with it, I guess. Next one is called the Human Condition Trilogy. So you get the Human Condition Part 1, 2, and 3, and then you also get a nice book, Kobayashi. We've got two more here on this shelf. We have the Killer Dames box set, Two Gothic Chillers by Emilio Maraglia. You get a book. You get the Red Queen kill seven times, and the Night Evelyn came out of the grave. This was limited to 3,000. And then this is kind of a visual, visually stunning, more of a kind of a documentary um, by Francis, Francis Ford Coppola Presents. Um, I'm going to try to pronounce it, even though I'm, I'm not sure how it's actually pronounced, but I would say... Koyanis Katsi, Life Out of Balance, and Pawa Katsi, Life in Transformation. And it's just basically, a, it's like a documentary of some of the more visually stunning things in the world. It says, told without dialogue, narration, cast, or characters. Dizzying, hypnotic examples of cinema set to extraordinary scores by Philip Glass. The first installment concentrates on the United States, contrasting its natural natural beauty with a population even more dependent on modern technology. The second switches to the Southern Hemisphere and focuses on cultures and traditions that are slowly eroding away as the modern world takes over. This also has a Criterion release. I think you can get them in single editions instead of getting them two together. But that is the end of shelf five, and we will continue on to shelf six. All right. Hope you guys are still with me. If you are, um, leave me a comment and just uh, put in pound sign, I don't know, shelf six, just to let me know that you guys are still here. And the first one is Wes Craven's The Last House on the left. If I sound a little bit different on the audio, it's because I'm crouched down, kind of leaning into the... I got like kind of like a little... Well, here's my record player and my records. Kind of in this little cubby hole here, and it might be sounding a little bit different on the audio. Here's uh, Bob Hoskins in The Long Good Friday and Mona Lisa box set. Here is a Ludwig box set. This is one of my favorite Arrow editions, the four Marx Brothers of Paramount from 1929 to 1933. And 
you get a nice book. You get Duck Soup, Monkey Business, Horse Feathers, The Coconuts, and Animal Crackers. And these guys are funny. And uh, I really love Groucho Marx. I think he was a genius. He was ahead of his time and easily one of the best comedians of all time. Here is uh, Bootgerite's Necromantic. These are pretty limited, I believe. I think it was limited, but I don't know what it was limited to. This is a three disc set. You get the CD soundtrack. And then here's Necromantic 2. Same deal. You get, uh, it's a three disc set. You get the uh, 24 track CD included. Plus they both have a 100 page book. They're not my favorite type of movies. Um, I'll be honest with you, but I think they're cool releases and they're collectible. Here's Outlaw Gangster VIP, the complete collection. You get Gangster VIP, Gangster VIP 2, Heartless, Goro, the Assassin, Black Dagger, and Kill. Limited to 3,000 copies. Here's the Phantasm box set. Comes with the, the sphere. I'm not going to pull that out. I haven't even touched that because I don't want to get fingerprints on it. I do watch this on a different uh, Blu-ray. I have the Welgo USA Blu-ray that I watch. This is more or less just a collector's piece. Here's Argento's Phenomena. And this movie has grown on me over the years. I, I didn't really like it. Uh, I watched this first as a child, as a kid growing up. And uh, the more I watch it, the more I do like it and appreciate it. Here's Reanimator. Oops, I almost dropped in. Pretty cool addition. You get a book and a digipack style packaging with the movies. And then here is Bride of Reanimator. Here's a really good box set here. This is the complete Sartana. You get a nice book. Oops, sorry about that. And you get Light the Fuse. Sartana is coming. Have a good funeral, my friend. Sartana will pay. Sartana's here. Trade your pistol for a coffin. I am Sartana, your angel of death. If you meet Sartana, pray for your death. How is that for titles? And that's a really nice box set. Here's one that's pretty rare, and I think this one's pretty expensive now. This is the Vincent Price Six Gothic Tales by Edgar Allan Poe. And you get the Fall of the House of Usher, Tales of Terror, The Haunted Palace, The Pit and the Pendulum, The Raven, and The Tomb of Lagaya. And you get a nice uh, hardcover book. Very nice set. And we have Brian Usna's Society, a very weird movie. Cool addition though. It's hard to tell, but it's embossed. So when you pick it up, it's all lumpy and bumpy. <laughs> it's, it feels as weird as it looks. And the last one for this shelf is the Stray Cat Rock box set. And in this box set you get Delinquent Girl Boss, Wild Jumbo, Sex Hunter, Machine Animal, and Beat 71. Limited to 2,000 copies. I had two of these at one time. I sold one, I think, or I gave it away. I can't remember. It might have been a contest prize. So that was it for shelf six. We will continue on shelf seven, and then we will move on to the next shelving unit. Okay, let's get down here in shelf seven. This is the most awkward shelf, but we will make it work. It's a pretty tight fit, so I move a couple things out. The first box set here is the Paolo and Vitorino Taviani box set. You get uh, Padre Padrone, the Night of the Shooting Stars and Chaos. And you get a nice book. Okay. Bear with me here, guys. 
trying to make this as enjoyable for you guys as possible. So the next one is one of my favorite horror movies of all time. And this is a direct sequel to the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 1974. This one was made 12 years later, so it was a, a very long gap in between the original and the sequel. This was more of a comedy horror, whereas the original TCM from 74 was just strictly horror and shock. This was more this one here is more of a tongue-in-cheek, kind of a, a dark humor horror movie. It's very well done. And this is a really nice box set here. You get these are digi packs. You get uh, the movie, and you get American Freak, Illuminations, and Toby Hooper's early works. So you do get some really good bonus features in this box set. I wouldn't mind seeing them redo this as a 4K box set with a hard shell because this is one of their early paper thin box sets where it's very cheap, chintzy. I would like to see them redo that in 4K with a nice quality box set. Here's Cronenberg's Videodrome. This one's a nice set. You get uh, Cronenberg's Early Works, which I showed you earlier. They did sell it separately, but if you have this box set, you don't need to have a double dip on it. But you get the movie, you get David Cronenberg's Early Works, and Long Live the New Flesh, which is a book. Here are some spaghetti westerns, four classic westerns called Vengeance Trails. These are the four directors. And these are the four movies. You get a book, you get Bandidos, you get Massacre Time, you get My Name is Pecos, and you get And God Said to Cain. Really nice box set. This is the state I live in. This is Bill Rebane collection. So you get a nice book on top. And you get six movies plus a documentary about Rebane. You get Monster A Go-Go, Invasion from Inner Earth, The Game, Twister's Revenge, The Alpha Incident, and The Demons of Ludlow. Plus you get Who is Bill Rebane, who what is a uh, documentary. This is a really cool set. The movies are a little bit uh, hit and miss. Very low budget, but I enjoyed them. Okay, so the next one here. This is uh, Italian crime movies. These, this is called Years of Lead. Five classic Italian crime thrillers from 1973 to 1977. You get Savage 3, Like Rabid Dogs, Colt 38, Highway Racer, and no, the case is happily resolved. This is the region A. There was a region B also that was had some scenes cut. And the region A was completely uncut. So if you're going to get this set, look for the region A if you like your movies uncut. So that was it for Blu-rays. Now these are going to be DVDs. First three are box sets. This is called the, let me set this down here. It's called the X Rental, and it's made to look like it's beat up. Actually, this box set is in mint condition, but it looks like it's just been through hell. And that's supposed to make it look like it's been rented and watched many times. Even that sticker is made to look like it's folded when it's actually printed on the box like that. But you get Maniac Cop, you get the Cheerleaders, you get Penitentiary, and you get McBain, and there's also, I believe, two more. You get also Revenge of the Cheerleaders. So you get the Cheerleaders and Revenge of the Cheerleaders as a double bill. And you get Penitentiary and Penitentiary 2 as a double bill. And you get McBain and Maniac Cop. So those are the six films in that package. Really nice little DVD set. And we get, these are kind of, oops, actually, you know what? I forgot to show the thing. I put it up and I forgot to show it. So, but this is John Carpenter's The Thing, limited edition. That goes way down here. We'll put that in later. 
but these were part of the window box editions of the DVDs. And this one was called Terror Awaits Inside. This is the Fantastic Factory Presents Faust, Love of the Damned, Roma Santa, The Werewolf Hunt, Beyond Reanimator, and Arachnid. And they came in this nice box here. It was a, they call it a window box because it just has like a plastic sheet on the, on the front. And then all the movies were housed inside. So you get the, uh, the little info sheet that was kind of glue dotted on the back of the box. And you get all the movies in their own case. And arachnid. So these were cool little DVD box sets. And then there's also another one. These are Argento films. These are the Dario Argento, the Neo Giallo collection. And in this set you get Terror at the Opera, the Stendhal Syndrome, Sleepless, and the Card Player. And again, they each came on their own case with the little window box. So, Alright, now we're going to get into the single edition DVDs. Okay, so getting into the DVDs here in the corner, you have Baise Moi. Bear Behind Bars. There are some DVDs I'm missing and I'm still tracking those down because I still do collect DVDs. Here's Herschel Gordon Lewis, Blood Feast 2. Here's Blue Movie, Blackmail, which was also called Super Bitch, I believe. Yeah, it was called Super Bitch. There's the Italian title. And there's another alternative title called Blue Movie Blackmail. Christmas Evil. Fun little holiday slasher. Combat Shock, Wes Craven's Deadly Blessing, Deadly Outlaw Rekka, Takashi Miike, The Deadly Spawn, Island of Death, Jaguar Lives, Christopher Lee and Donald Pleasance, the Kentucky Fried Movie, Jonathan Landis Movie, Macabre, or Macabre, however you decide to say it, the Lamberto Bava Movie, Martin, a vampire movie by George A. Romero, John Russo's Midnight. The Night Child, AKA the Cursed Medallion. Pervert. Two more on this shelf. It's kind of hard to get at these. Pieces, which is one of the best looking DVD covers, I think. And it's a, a great movie. It's a Spanish slasher movie. One of the best taglines ever, too. You don't have to go to Texas for a chainsaw massacre. And another one was um, Pieces. It's exactly what you think it is. I love that DVD. I love the movie, too. I wouldn't say I love the movie. I like it. And Savage Streets. That's the last one for this shelf and the last one for this shelving unit. So let me get up here. So that was all seven shelves for shelving unit number one. 
we're going to move over here. We have two more shelves to do, and then I have a couple of box sets I'm going to do at the very end. Okay, so again, if you guys would could do me a favor and give it a thumbs up or leave a comment and consider checking out my past three or four videos. Those haven't been getting very many views. If you guys could check those out for me, that would mean a lot to me. So we're going to continue. There's a couple more DVDs, and then we're going to get into the Steelbooks. So the first DVD is Silent Night, Deadly Night. Put that up there for now. We have Jolly Killer, AKA, hold on, Slaughter High. So that is the alternate title. It's a British horror movie. We have Street Trash. For now, I have uh, Surf Nazis Must Die. And the last DVD is Two Evil Eyes. And you get two one hour movies one by George A. Romero, and one by Dario Argento. And that will do it for the DVDs. So I'm gonna pause it here briefly and we're gonna get into the steel books. Okay, so I'm gonna to try to get angles where I get less uh, reflection here. First one is another Takashi Miike movie called Audition. Next one is Battle Royale Steelbook. Fulci's The Beyond. Big Trouble in Little China. Mario Bava's Black Sunday. Another Bava, Blood and Black Lace. Brian De Palma, Blowout. I really enjoy this movie. John Travolta is in it. And Nancy Allen. I recommend checking that one out. It's very good. It's a whodunit murder uh, movie. Another favorite of mine. I can watch this a couple times every year, and I do. This is Tom Hanks in The Burbs, a Joe Dante movie. Joe Dante's best picture, I think. Here is The Burning. City of the Living Dead. Check out that cover. Day of the Dead. Demons and Demons 2. The Fall of the House of Usher. The Driller Killer, Foxy Brown, The Hills Have Eyes, Argento's Inferno, Invasion of the Body Snatchers remake, 1978. Killer Clowns from Outer Space. King of New York. This one is pretty rare. This is also Killer Clowns from Outer Space, but this was put out by Everything Blue. And they designed a very limited slip box for the same steelbook that I just showed from Arrow Video. And I believe these were limited to 300. And I have number 259 out of 300, and these are very, very rare. It might be my rarest Arrow Video title. Here's Lady Snowblood, and Lady Snowblood 2. Um, the sequel is called Lady Snowblood Love Song of Vengeance. A 
Wes Craven's The Last House on the Left. Bought that at a, um, where did I buy this? I don't remember, but I got it for 10 bucks. $9.99. Toby Hooper's Life Force. The Long Good Friday. Maniac Cop. I enjoy these movies. I think they're great. Phantom of the Paradise. Phenomena. Another panoramic cover. The Pit and the Pendulum. Here's one that kind of doesn't fit to me. It's kind of weird that Arrow released this, but it's Porky's. Cronenberg's Rabid. Again, I, I enjoy that movie. Here's FYE Exclusive Reanimator. I think that's where I got the uh, Last House on the Left. I think I also got that at FYE. I can't remember, though. Here's Cronenberg Shivers. Time Bandits. Theater of Blood. The Thing. Tenebrae. Two more on this shelf. White of the Eye. And probably my favorite steelbook from Arrow Video that is Zombie Flesh Eaters. So that was it for the steel books, and we're moving right along here now. This is pretty good. I got one more little shelf here to show and a couple box sets, and we will wrap this up. So this last shelf here, these are the window box editions, and these are beautiful editions. This really got me into wanting to collect everything that I could from Arrow at the time, even though I did start collecting the DVDs before these even came out. But once these hit, I was, I was hooked. These are all of them. Have uh, Battle Royale again. And these were cool because they had multiple covers that you can put for the display for your movie. You can switch those out and it had like a little window box there to kind of display your cover. And they also had a lot of uh, extra stuff. Sometimes they would come with little comic books Sometimes they would have fold-out posters. Sometimes they would have multiple discs with extra bonus features. This one has three discs. And this is when Arrow Video was at the top of their game, I think, when they were with a, a company called Cult Labs and they were kind of collaborating together to put out these beautiful editions. Next one is A Bay of Blood. Next one is The Beyond. The bird with the crystal plumage. Black Sunday. Caligula. This one was hard to track down. This was the very last one that I found. The Cat O' Nine Tales. City of the Living Dead. This one's very rare. I'll tell you quickly about it. This is Dawn of the Dead. There was a London riot, I believe it was 2011, when these were released. And one of the their main warehouses for Aero Video was burned, burned to the ground during that riot. And a lot of the stock was destroyed. So they don't know exactly how many of these remain, but when you find these on the secondary market, that's the only place you can really find them now. You can't buy them on, e on uh, 
at Arrow anymore. So your best bet is eBay, and you're going to probably pay a little bit of money for these. But luckily I bought that before the uh, warehouse burned down. And Day of the Dead. Deep Red. Demons. Demons 2. The Exterminator. 80s over the top action. The Forbidden Zone. Japanese silliness and oddness. Frankenhooker. Comedy horror. More comedy, more silly comedy than anything else. Toby Hooper's Fun House. The House by the Cemetery. Inferno. Lisa and the Devil. I believe this was the very last one that they released for these window box. And I was really sad that they stopped making these. It would be nice maybe if they every once in a while they'd pop up with one. But we'll see what happens. It's been many years. When did this come out? This was the last one released and it was came out in 2013. So it's it's been it'll be nine years this year. Maniac Cop. Brian De Palma's Obsession. This one's cool. It's a little bit thicker. It comes with the screenplay book. Phenomena. Red Scorpion. Some more 80s action. Starring Dolph Lundgren. Tenebrae again. Vamp. This one was the most limited. This was limited to 500 pieces. And believe it or not, when I first bought these, you would think nowadays if Arrow released anything 500, it would be sold out in a matter of minutes. But I had five copies of this at one time. I wish I would have held on to them longer because these are going for ridiculous money right now. Not that I would ever try to fleece anybody, but I could probably trade for some good stuff if I kept those. I ended up giving some away pretty much and just trading for almost nothing, but yeah, that was limited to 500. I don't know why they did that, because that, that, that would have been a really good seller. I don't know why they only made 500 of them. Now these are window boxes from Arrow Academy. I don't know how many Arrow Academy window boxes they had. I have five of them. First one is Ashes and Diamonds. I compare Arrow Academy to kind of like Criterion, the kind of artsy movies and foreign movies and stuff like that. Here's Bicycle Thieves, window box. Here's the Conformist. This one's pretty cool. This one is Spirits of the Dead. It's an anthology and has a Federico Fellini segment in here. It's pretty cool. Three Tales of the Macabre by Edgar Allan Poe. One of them is by Federico, Federico Fellini, who I really enjoy. I think he's great. And then the last one I have is the Tin Drum. So stick around because I'm going to take my show on the road into the other bedroom. I'm going to go back to my bed and I'm going to show you guys a couple of box sets and then we will wrap this video up. And this is where you guys come in. Not only can you thumb me up and check out some of my past videos, but you can also suggest to me movies that you didn't see in my collection that you think I should absolutely have. So stay tuned for this last segment. Okay, here we are back in the Walnut Studio here at the Walnuts Compound. This is where all the magic happens, and I know you guys like to see the ladies. So it wouldn't be a video without the two, Miss Hannah foreground and Miss Heidi in the back. Somebody commented that Heidi's always in the same place, and that's true. Heidi actually sleeps in the bed with me at night, and that's where she sleeps in that corner. I sleep on this side here. Hannah does not like to be on the bed at night, so... 
That's why Heidi is always in the upper left hand corner. That's where she sleeps at night. And that's, I think that's where she feels most comfortable. So we have two more box sets to show you and we will conclude the Arrow video collection for the year. We will call it 2021 because I will probably show another video either at the very end of this year or early next year. After a year passes, we'll see how much the collection has grown over the next year if it grows at all. There's so many different companies releasing stuff. I haven't been buying as much Arrow over the last couple years as I had been. So we'll see over the next year how much, if it even, if it's even worth uh, uploading another video, we will see. This first set here is the Pieces Puzzle Box Set. So you get the, the beautiful uh, box set here with the movie and the book warning what you will see in the movie pieces cannot be revealed cannot be described cannot even be imagined and then you get the puzzle which if you've seen the movie you know what the puzzle means and then here's what the, the image of the puzzle looks like when you put that together i don't know what this was limited to i think maybe 1500 a thousand i'm not sure i will never sell it so but it comes in this nice box and then here's the kind of the information. Uh, here it says on the back, limited to 1,000. There you go, right there. I do have the soundtrack as well. It also came with a vinyl soundtrack. Actually, it's in with my other stuff, but I'm gonna go grab it now just to show you guys really quick. So here's the Pieces Vinyl, original motion picture soundtrack on vinyl from Arrow Video. It comes with a blood red record, like you see there in the picture. Not going to pull that out. It's in a plastic sheet, a plastic sleeve rather. And uh, it's a really cool little box set. And I really like this. It's a little bit, you know, it's too big. It's awkward to put on a shelf. So I just kind of have it tucked away in a bedroom. But I pull it out every once in a while to show you guys. And the last one I'm going to show you is, it's pretty cool. I actually got this from film director Tim Sullivan and he sent that to me that's my real name and this is the Herschel Gordon Lewis shock and gore this is the big box set I think this was limited to 250 or 300 I can't remember and the reason that Tim Sullivan I think he got five of these free from Arrow video because first of all he knew Herschel Gordon Lewis personally and they worked together on some projects and Tim Sullivan was involved in making this box set and he is involved in a lot of these special features for this box set so for compensation uh, as well as pay they also gave Tim Sullivan I think five box sets in which of one of these I have these one of these were his so I'm gonna pause it pull it out he also sent me an 8x10 and he signed it to Walnuts. I thought that was pretty cool. I tried looking for it so I can show you guys. But I don't remember exactly where I put it right now. So um, I'm not going to be able to show you that for this video. But I thought that was pretty cool that he included it with this box set. Alright, so I got everything kind of taken out. I'm going to go through and show you the inside of the box set. Uh, and just to kind of show you proof, um, there is the billing address and that was where the movies were delivered to Tim Sullivan in Los Angeles California here's the box and I opened it already just because it, it was really hard to open even uh, especially with one hand it wouldn't have worked so with two hands I had a rough time opening it but it's a really nice deluxe box set it has foam padding on the inside it comes with a kind of a rubber eye kind of gore and here's the box let me see if on the back if it it doesn't say how many it was limited to. If any of you guys remember, I can easily look it up on Google too, but if any of you guys remember what this was limited to, I want to say 250 or 300. Kind of rings a bell. But, um, yeah, so we'll kind of go through. There's a stack of, uh, like, postcards. I'm not going to go through everything. This video is already much long, very, very long. <laughs> Here's a little book, The Blood Feast. Goes in there like that. Here's a vomit bag, guaranteed to upset your stomach. 
you get a little record, a little black record, original soundtrack recording for the movie. You get a big hardcover book here. Lots of nice glossy color photos. And then of course you get the movies, which comes in this nice hard shell box. You get another book. This is the Herschel Gordon Lewis, kind of like an activity type book. Comics and photos, really cool stuff in here. And then you have a couple of uh, Digipack style books on the inside that house the movie. So you get Blood Feast, Scum of the Earth, 2000 Maniacs, and Moonshine Mountain. Color Me Blood Red and Something Weird. The Gruesome Twosome, A Taste of Blood. And that was it for this box. And then for the second one, you get She-Devil on Wheels, and just for the hell of it, How to Make a Doll, The Wizard of Gore, The Gore Gore Girls, This Stuff Will Kill Ya. And what does that say? Blood Feast, Scum of the Earth, Color Me Blood Red, A Taste of Blood, The Wizard of Gore, and the Herschel Gordon Lewis, The Godfather of Gore. I believe that is a documentary about Mr. Herschel Gordon Lewis. So let me put this stuff away and I will conclude the video. Alrighty, so that was a long video and if you made it through, give yourselves a pat on the back. I really appreciate it. I always appreciate the support and the banter. So if you guys want to comment, suggest stuff, I always, I read every comment, I respond to every comment. So feel free to leave those below. But yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing what you guys think about the collection. And again, I'm always looking for suggestions. So that was my full Arrow Video collection. And again, thank you for watching. Take care, and I will see you guys in the next video. Later.